Cyborgs, or Borgs, were added to the game. They are built by scientists and presumably maybe roboticists. I don't know if we're going to go that route. Either way, to start building a Borg, you need to go to the exosuit fabricator located in science. And without any technologies, you're able to build a Borg. You just need the materials. The only thing you'll need is a artificial brain or a unfortunate person's brain. But in this case, I'll just use the artificial brain. And you also need to print out uh, a full cyborg piece. So you always need an endoskeleton. And regardless what type of specialty you want, you need to print out all their pieces. So if you just want to build a cyborg, you don't have any specific idea of what you what the station needs or what you want to make. You just need to print out the cyborg arms, the legs, the head, and the torso. And the other pieces have different requirements, like the janitor doesn't have arms. Once that is all printed, you just take the endoskeleton to a good working position, and it'll say, the cyborg limbs and torsos must be attached, so you just get the torso, and you basically just put on every single piece that you crafted. You also need a power cell, which you can either craft, or you can just take some from, like, for example, this health analyzer as a power cell. It is a small capacity power cell, so keep that in mind. Then it'll take a low voltage cable, and then two flashes for the eyeballs, and then a screwdriver, and this Borg is finished. You must open their maintenance panel, and you'll see there's no brain present. This is also where you can rename them and how you insert modules for them to do work. You give them a artificial brain, you just pick up the brain, press Z, and put it in. And once the lights turn yellow, that means that this is open to being a ghost rule. Anyone can take this over now. However, if we don't give them any modules, they won't be able to do any specific work. And without tech, you're not going to have many modules. But five of the default modules that can fit into just a default cyborg are cable modules and the cable module and the tool module. These two will allow Borgs to go around and fix basic problems with wiring and problems with the floor. They can't like build anything because they won't have materials, but I will show you now what these two modules do. So once you're inside a Borg, the lights will turn blue to indicate that you are a soul in the machine. You can talk to people and everyone can understand you as of right now. And on the left side of your screen, you'll have this interesting looking UI, it say view laws. It will make your laws appear on the screen and you must obey these laws. I'm not going to read them out. You can pause if you want to read it. This is already going to be like a 20 minute update video. <laughs> but anyways, I remember I installed the cable and tool module. So the tool module gives you a crowbar, wrench, screwdriver, and a wire cutter. And if you swap to the cable module, it'll give you all three types of cables, just 10 of them, wire cutters, and a T-ray scanner. So that gives you everything you need to fix the wires of the station. Uh, obviously, you can figure that out from there. Uh, you can't get any hand slots. So once you're, if you were to use all of your wires, it would just be empty. So you'd have to get new wires. Once your battery starts draining, you have to return to these cyborg recharging stations. All you do is press E on it to open it, press E to get in it, and it charges you pretty quickly once it's done. The lights will flash green, or you can just look on the UI on the side, and that is it. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more going on for cyborgs. Uh, you can try to figure them out in-game. They're realistically not that complicated and, uh, to at least understand how to build them and uh, play, do the basics as them. Interpreting the laws is probably going to be a bit of work for a lot of people, especially me, because I don't have 13 experience, so I don't really understand the, like, the pretext of what cyborgs are supposed to have done or like how to interpret the laws exactly. By the way, it is very cool content. It allows dead people to get back into the round and it allows gib people to potentially keep playing as well. And that's always good because being stuck as a ghost isn't the most exciting thing ever. The thermoelectric generator, otherwise known as the tag, was added to the game. And very quickly, no, this is not where a tag would normally be. However, the tag is not technically finished. And I'm only going to include it very quickly because I think it's going to be finished very soon. I'm not entirely sure the state of it. I saw it tested in game and it was working, but obviously there's some problems with it. I don't understand it. I'm not going to pretend to. But very quickly, how the tag would work is if you shift click it to examine it, you'll see arrows. Passes gas through the thermoelectric generator exchange heat has an inlet and outlet port. So for one side, you want it to be extremely cold and pumping air. Airflow is the name of the game. Another side, you want it to be extremely hot pumping air. Remember, airflow is the name of the game. 
And in the middle, you'll see how much power you produce. Obviously, there's none because I'm not setting it up. Um, due to the fact that it's not fully in the game and you won't be able to play with it unless an admin spawns it in, which I don't think we're supposed to even be spawning it in. But either way, I will probably include it in next week's update if it's done then, but I'm just including it now. Uh, we'll see. It might be finished. It might not be finished. Either way, it is going to be a thing, and it is going to be a new form of power generation that's a little bit more complex than turning on an AME by pressing four buttons. Cocoa bean growing has been added to the game. And this is an actual way to make chocolate bars, because the only way to get chocolate bars before was from emergency toolboxes and vending machines. So this is actually a replenishable way of making uh, chocolate. And you could eat the cocoa beans straight up, or you can make it with milk and, uh, I believe, sugar. You also have to ground down the cocoa beans into powder. And yeah, now you can make chocolate bars and just chocolate treats for your crew members that can eat them. Diana can now walk through Kudzu at full speed, and you can imagine the utility here. No other species can move nearly this fast through Kudzu, so you can use it for your advantage as an antagonist, or just use it to your advantage in dealing with the Kudzu. Chat has been changed for now. If you talk, like the name of the person speaking is bolded, making it a little bit more readable. If you whisper, it makes the entire text smaller. If you emote, it has still an italicized font to it to make it clear that it's not speaking. And things like radio, again, have a different pop-out font to them. And things like making an announcement will have very large font to let everyone know that the announcement is essentially more important, or not necessarily more important, but it's to catch your attention. And there are other examples of the chat having improvements, but those are the big ones. Door remotes have been changed to allow you to open doors that uh, you have access to yourself. So normally command doors would only open command doors, but since I have access to like maintenance, for example, I can open maintenance doors with my remote. If I take my ID off, I can't access maintenance doors with my remote anymore because I don't have the ID. But I could still open the command doors because the remote itself has that access. This gives people with the correct access way more power over the remotes and also makes stealing certain remotes uh, more useful in that regard as well because you'll be adding your access to it and getting the access from the remote. Arachnids have been reworked. They can now do things like spin silk in order to make web structures, which you can do with the action on the side and you can just continually do it. You can also have four hands now. Well, not you can. You do have four hands now, but only two pockets. And having four hands, as you can imagine, is uh, extremely powerful. Because you can do things like wield a fire axe, hold a shield in your hand, which actually obscures the fire axe in some angles. And you can still drag something while being able to have a fire axe, have a shield up. And the in-hand sprites get a little wonky uh, with this, because now you can't even tell I have a shield. Because the... I'm guessing like the sprite layering of it wasn't intended for this, but either way, there is some extraordinarily powerful things here. Other very quick things to mention is arachnids are no longer faster. They are the same speed as every species other than Diana. They don't really have any damage modifier differences other than the fact they take more a lot more heat, but they're pretty standard with the rest, and they suffocate a little less quickly now. They are better than they were before in low oxygen environments. Cargo bounties have had their rewards increase significantly. So, for example, if you could get your hands on five technology discs, which isn't that easy, but is possible, you would get $25,000. Or, like, for example, five handcuffs, which isn't that hard to get either, is four grand. Uh, before, bounties were really only worth doing if you just somehow had that managed to have the supplies on hand. But with how much some of them are worth now, uh, it is certainly worth trying to get these done like for example 10 trash is easy to get so you might as well just get your free 700 bucks out of it emagging lace now gives them new crafting recipes so if i emag this auto lace i can craft all the different air ammos in the game at least the common ammos in the game you can't craft like caseless bullets but you can craft shotgun shells you could craft the automatic bullets for like the uh, wt 550 if you manage to get your hands on that you could craft revolver bullets for like the python uh, yeah, basically anything you could possibly need, you can craft it here. So that is pretty useful, if especially for like shotgun shells. Like if you just get a flare and you emag 
a lathe. You can craft shells for your flare gun, or you can make the makeshift shotgun, whatever you can manage to get your hands on. Very powerful. You can also hack proto lathes as well, it's not just auto lathe. Cargo is no longer an objective for the syndicates. The syndicates have lost interest in the cargo request computer board, and the idea behind it is that the cargo request computer board is always pretty easy to get. There's extra boards, um, there's more often times more than one computer you can break into and get, and it's not like the ID computer where you could just go into the bridge or go into hop in order to find an extra computer. Here it's just in the same rooms with low security. So that is the ultimate reason for removing cargo as a objective, specifically the cargo board. Guns have had their mechanics changed. You can now like rack guns, for example, you can open their bolt, which will again expend bullets, but then it'll make it so you can't shoot the gun because the bolt is open, which means you have to reclose the bolt. And with that, you are ready to fire, just like a real gun. So it gives guns some more depth, especially with their sprites, which the open bolt on sprites looks awesome. Like, that looks fantastic. And just a little bit more complexity to the gun mechanics. Stun batons and bolas now do stamina damage. And just a really quick footnote, bolas are now cheaper. They only cost 5 low voltage cables instead of 15. And you can craft them quicker because you don't need to make makeshift cuffs, but a little out of topic. So, if you throw just a stun baton that's turned on and hit somebody, they'll flash red. I guess blue, technically. But what you could do that's really powerful, if you have two stun batons, you can chuck both, or basically an instantaneous stun. But once they recover, even with bolos, you could do the same thing. And the nice thing about bolos is, once they get unstunned, they will be slower. So if you weren't able to cuff them in time, they have to take the time to sh uh, tear the bolo off their foot. Vims can now be made, and it's under Critter Mechs. Uh, it is a Tier 1 civilian service. Once you research that, you can go to the Exosuit Fabricator, just like if you make a Borg, you type in Vim. You can make it the Vim Harness. It doesn't, unfortunately, tell you what you need, but in order to make a Vim, you just need uh, Borg legs. You need an EVA helmet. Legs on. Apparently you only need one leg, even. Put the helmet on. You need a voice trigger, which you can make at a proto lathe, And a power cell, which you can borrow from something like a health analyzer, or even this light here will work. And you just screwdriver it. And now the Vim is completed. Now that it's completed, something like a mouse can just alt-click on the Vim, and you become a little mech. The sound is interesting, it's the hard suit helmet sound. I'm not sure why it's that, but it definitely gets old quick, in my opinion. But this allows even the littlest crit critters to survive in space and spaced areas. You can now craft jugs at medical tech fabs. Uh, I don't know exactly why I can't. I'm assuming it's going to be fixed. It doesn't mention needing any techs, and I've already researched them all just to test. But either way, uh, being able to make blank named jugs is going to be very helpful for all medical, not just chemists, because it's become very common to just make a large amount of medicine in one jug rather than having to fight through 50 pill piles or whatever other methods people used. More dangerous chemicals like sulfur and other things will now actually damage you. Before, things like sulfur just wouldn't damage you, but now they do a very slight amount of, like, caustic damage, or I'm not going to name every single type of damage and every chemical that changed. There's a little bit more logic to the dangerous chemicals actually being dangerous. They're not, like, hilariously dangerous, but, like, if I were to sip a little bit of sulfur, it doesn't tell you that it's going to kill you, but it does do a tiny amount of damage per sip. And things like bleach and stuff have gotten more damage to them and will make you scream when you drink them. Uh, just nice little changes across the board for consistency. The Hollow Clown Projector is added to the game. It is a clown-only purchasable item. It is a box that comes with a Hollow Crown Injector, a Hollow Clown figure, and a rubber hammer. You inject yourself just like a Hollow Parasite. It takes a little do-after action. And you will be haunted with a hollow clown. The hollow clown is quite literally a holographic representation of a clown. It even squeaks like a clown. They are very fast. It can't go any further than like a normal hollow uh, guardian would. But the really interesting thing about them is they actually have a hand slot and pocket slots. So they can 
hide something for you in their pockets. Um, they do come with a bike horn, that's very important. If you were to give them something like a gun, they can't use it, which is very funny to me. They are still a clown, so uh, don't bother trying to give them a gun. They would have to have a melee weapon. But they are basically like having an extra person that only comes out to help you when you need them. And it's pretty unique in that aspect. Uh, their normal punching damage is pretty irrelevant, though. So... They do punch faster, but it doesn't do that much damage, so you probably will want to give them an actual weapon. Death message has been added to the game, so like, even for something like a mouse, if a mouse were to die, it'll have the message seizes up and falls limp, its eyes dead and lifeless, and it'll even appear in chat. Death gasps, faking your death and succumbing have been added to the game. So if I were to just press 6, I would just die. If I press 4, I'll fake my death, pretend to take your final breath. It'll even do the seizes up, falls limps, in his eyes, dead and lifeless. But if you examine, it will say, I am not dead. And you will, will start gasping again, and it goes on cooldown. But I think the most interesting part of this is say your last words. So if you press 5, you'll have your last words. And it could be up to 30 characters long. So a lot of people are going to definitely use this for insults. Or you could just use this for whatever message you want. As soon as you press OK, you'll die. Seizes up, falls limp, eyes dead, and lifeless. Very cool. Let's you get your final moment if you're not just insta-killed. Um, I see this being used for great effect in roleplay and just... In general, it's a lot more interesting than typing slash ghost or slash suicide for sure. The janitor trash card has been added. It is basically just a locked crate on wheels that janitors can open and put trash in, close it and lock it, and keep dragging it to the next trash. It is pretty cool because it's basically a mobile trash can, and you can put things that aren't considered garbage in it. So, I guess as a janitor you can actually bring something like a mobile stash with you because it is locked to people with janitorial access. The access configurator is added to the game. It bonds in both the chief engineer and the head of personnel's locker. The head of personnel obviously will have a little bit more use to it due to having more access. The way it works is that you take out a privileged ID, so like you could, the chief engineer could take his own ID and put it into the access configurator. What you do is you can left click on anything with access, like a door or a locker, and you can change the accesses. So for example, if I wanted to make this door all access, I could do so. So I have removed accesses on this door, and now the chief engineer does not have a privatized door. Or if I wanted to make this door only accessible to the chief engineer, I could do so. And you have to have the ID still like in your hand or something. It doesn't access it even if it's in the configurator. And another quick footnote, the way it works is you can't change the access on doors if you don't have access to them. So if I were to get a passenger ID, for example, and put it in the, the uh, configurator, I can't change this door because access to the device cannot be modified. The inserted ID is missing the following privilege, Chief Engineer. I can't change the access, but if I were to make it so I had maintenance access on it, I can actually open this door again because I have one of the required accesses. You do not need every single access to be able to open a door. So syndicates that get their hands on this can basically make every door all access or make every door captain only so like if you were to steal all access only somebody who has like the captain's permission could open doors so you could cause a lot of damage in that regard another thing that's worth mentioning this actually lets you fix emag doors but you have to tear apart the door first in order to give it new access but either way I, it is the first real way to fix emag doors higher level security doors like atmos door security doors and command doors now require extra steps in order to deconstruct them for example, something like a command door, if you open the maintenance panel, you can't just hack it immediately. It will say, inside is a security grill, use wire cutters to cut them. So if I don't have insulated gloves, I would shock myself. In this scenario, I could just snip the wires. And then the next step, it would say, a plasteel plate has been welded to the inside of the maintenance panel, use a welder to free it. If I were to unweld it, I'd be able to hack the door like normal. You can also weld your own plates onto a door like so in order to add security to doors that wouldn't have it otherwise. 
this overall will slow down hacking and let people add security to doors that have been messed with previously. The pickaxe and mining drill have been nerfed. The pickaxe has both lost structural damage and raw damage, and the mining drill has lost structural damage. The mining drill still only weighs 5 though, while the pickaxe actually weighs 80, where it used to only weigh 24, so you can't just carry it with you as easily as other objects. It has also been made more expensive to craft, so now it costs 10 pieces of steel and 5 pieces of wood instead of 2 pieces of steel and 1 piece of wood. They are still both really good at destroying structures though, like, because you can wield the pickaxe and that gives it a whopping 20 structural damage, meaning you can still tear through most doors and such rather quickly. The wheelchair trait has been added to the game and these people are wheelchair bound. It is a vehicle that has a little horn, which is funny. And you move incredibly slowly. Uh, I think this is technically added like last week, but um, the difference is is that it was broken and had to get removed immediately. But it is working correctly now, and expect to see your wheelchair-bound crew members on station. Solid secret doors, which look just like a steel wall, have been added to the game. They require four steel, four rods, a screwdriver, four low voltage cables, a power cell, and a screwdriver to make. And obviously, in this scenario, it's obvious what it looks like, but for example, you could do something like this, where it's actually two doors, and at this point, it would look just like a wall. You press E on it, there's no audio for it to hide your secrets, and it will open up just like a normal door, and can be closed like a door. You can do some very sneaky things with this. Stamps have been changed to look more like an actual like stamp, rather than being like perfectly aligned and perfect inked. Uh, this is an example of a stamp with only two stamps on it, and this is an example of a paper with every stamp in the game, and, uh, yeah, it gets a little hard to read, and if you shift-click it, yeah, it's just, this paper has been stamped by basically every person in existence. Advanced laser guns, which are now called advanced laser pistols, have received a nerf. They now recharge slower and weigh more, and they're still incredibly good because they have essentially infinite ammo, but the fact that they recharge slower does make them not quite as useful, but it still recharges, I mean, fairly fast, and it does decent damage in its hit scan, so that is something worth mentioning. They're still probably going to be the most popular weapon choice when people can get their hands on them due to that. Chain link fences have been added to the game, and you can craft them in your construction menu. They all take five rods each, either the fence, the corner, the skate, or the end piece. Uh, you can run up to them and touch them and rattle them, or if what if a piece of it is shocked, it will shock you just like a grill. But these are pretty cool because, well, they're basically wall pieces and door pieces, and yeah, well, <laughs> I managed to kill myself, but I expect to see these used for rage cages. EMPs have been buffed across the board. EMP grenades are now two telecrystals. The EMP implant is only three telecrystals. And then there's the electrical disruptor kit for six telecrystals, and inside that, there are three EMP grenades and the EMP implanter. Very powerful stuff. Security could now actually get their security HUDs inside their lockers, or they could get them inside the sec tech. Uh, what the security HUD is, it lets you see people's job icons instantly above their head. And the problem is, though, is that it makes it so you can't use your flash uh, weapons, because it doesn't protect your eyes, as you can see. So you have to decide, do you want instantaneous ability to spot people with the incorrect IDs or people that look suspicious, or do you want to be able to use flashes for more combat capability? I mean, most people are just going to carry both sets and swap them as they need, but you don't always have the luxury of time. The stun prod is added to the game. It costs a rod, 15 low voltage cables, uh, space glue, don't ignore the drink part, power cell, and a capacitor. It isn't all that easy to make. But once you make it, you can put it in your hand, press E, and it doesn't do any damage when it's turned on. And it's not particularly powerful for stunning people. It takes five hits to actually stun someone, and that would take all of its juice. So if you aren't able to stun somebody immediately with it, uh, you're just out of luck. It also weighs uh, 100, so you can't really be hiding it. So it's a very situational item for sure. The last thing I'll cover is... Blood Red Mag Boots actually have jets in them now, meaning that you can use Blood Red Mag Boots to fly in space. They won't last very long, I've already used almost a tenth of my fuel just doing this tiny spacewalk. 
And another change to the Blood Red Mag Boots is that you don't lose as much movement speed when they're on now. So this is turned on, and that's off. You can hardly even notice it, but the benefits is you'll have full movement speed and no gravity, and you won't slip. Now, I know this was a ton of information. I may have even missed stuff, but there has not been a week since I started playing this game that had this much content. So I will slowly scroll through the changelog. I heavily encourage you all to take a look at it because there was a lot, and it was even hard for me to keep up with it all. So I'm sure that I missed something. But I want you to give a very large thank to all of our maintainers and contributors. This was just an absolutely crazy week of content fixes and just all of the above new sprites. It's hard to cover all this stuff in a singular week, but I couldn't imagine trying to cover it all within a longer period. I'd be doing this for days. That's enough about me. Like I said, please give a huge thanks to everyone who makes this game possible in, in, the, in the state it is in. And I will scroll through the change log so you can look at things. I didn't include this one specifically because the supermatter grenades don't seem to function at the moment. And I'll wait for them to get fixed. But other than that, yeah. That is all I got for now. And I'll just keep scrolling until I have hit the end of the change log. It will take a bit.